Welcome to another episode of UEM PD TV. I'm Jared Fawson, a trainer at UEM Professional Development. And we're here with Chris Keim, who's the principal here at Clearfield High, and he's using Canvas in innovative ways with his faculty and staff. Chris, why don't you tell us what you've got going on with Canvas? We use Canvas for our faculty to professional development. Uh, everything we do in faculty meeting is also included on our Canvas course so that if teachers miss faculty meeting, they can be up to speed with what's going on. And we also use it for uh, some discussions, the Canvas forums for teachers to discuss things that are going on and topics that we've discussed in faculty meeting. So why did you decide to use Canvas for this? Uh, when I was first a principal, I wanted to make sure that we didn't do to each other as professionals what we didn't want to do to kids in a classroom, which is bore them to death. <laughs> and so we wanted faculty meetings to be a time for collaboration, for discussion, for um, job embedded professional development rather than just sharing information. So Canvas serves a couple of functions. It allows us to warehouse information, faculty handbooks, documents, and it gives teachers a chance to go through on their own time important information and mandates that need to be completed, but it also allows us to uh, do some interactive, more interactive things both in our meetings as well as outside of our meetings to get teachers connecting and collaborating and learning from each other. So you've got a lot of resources in there for teachers um, and you mentioned that you do some interactive things. What, what are some of these interactives that you've included? One of the ones that I'm most familiar with that I've used quite a bit is uh, Nearpod. We, a lot of times we'll have a presentation that goes along with faculty meeting and it's a way that we get teachers engaged. And so we'll have uh, a Nearpod lesson that has the post-it feature as well as uh, some of the poll features that allow teachers to uh, share their opinions and insights uh, in the meeting. And then we can go through and process in the meeting what they're what that feedback is and what they're saying and that that can guide the direction that we're going in the meeting. Uh, one example of that is we've been working on articulating mission and vision statements mm -hmm. and we want everybody's feedback but it's not always uh, productive in a whole group right. to just open that up uh, for discussion and so we had some targeted questions that we got feedback using that Nearpod post-it feature and then in our leadership team we processed that feedback and boiled it down and then we took it back to the faculty in a similar way and said basically what do you think about this do you agree with it do you not what feedback do you have based on these categories that that we felt the previous feedback fell into mm -hmm. and and so they gave more feedback and we were able to whittle it down and articulate a, a vision statement over a period of a few months but without having it become unwieldy and having having it go off in a direction that was counterproductive. Well, you know, I've been in those faculty meetings and things get opened up for discussion. And like you said, they can be pretty unproductive and people can grandstand and not a lot can get done. And so I think, you know, using Nearpod and Canvas in conjunction together and, and really giving your staff some time to process and then give their thoughts is, is a great way um, to, to disseminate all that information. It's worked out well uh, for, for those reasons as well as younger teachers or more reserved teachers just like in a classroom you have learners that are not willing to speak out for whatever reason but they do have opinions and they are valuable and, and the same thing in a faculty it gives them a chance to share their opinions in a non-threatening uh, even anonymous way and so that their voice can be heard as well as those who are more comfortable right. speaking in front of a group. And, and it helps keep us focused. Well, and, and I think overall, it's a great way to model using technology. You know, you're, you're showing your staff and teachers how they could be using it with their students in class. Mm -hmm. And that became the goal when I came to Clearfield, was uh, wanting to model some of the tools that are available for teachers to use for engagement as well as blended instruction. And so the summer, before my first year here, I took a beginning Canvas course that our district offers just to get familiar with some of the features and functions. And, and that helped me out a lot to, to, on my own time in the summer, be able to get familiar with that. And uh, I'm by no means an expert, but I'm learning a little bit more all the time about all that Canvas makes available. So how, how long did it take you to get things set up? 
to where they are now? Well, uh, it's been almost two years. Mm -hmm. So the first, the first year, it was mostly, I'd say maybe the first few months, it was mostly for information warehousing. Mm -hmm. Here's our faculty handbook. Here's our, you know, the faculty calling tree. This is where you go to get information. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of meetings and uh, recognizing that for whatever reason, teachers have different things that may take them away from meeting, it became a place to put uh, not just meeting information, but to set up discussions. Uh, and we haven't used that function a whole lot, but to allow teachers who weren't there to engage in the, in the meeting in some way, similar to when a kid is absent. And we want them to have as close to a, an experience as they would have had in class. And so it didn't take too long to see that we could use it for more than just information, that we could use it to have it be an interactive tool to help help teachers stay up to speed and to be a part of a meeting even if they weren't able to make it. Right. So let's say there's other administrators out there who want to start using Canvas in a similar way. What, what tips, now that you've gone through this, would you have for somebody starting out? Just jump in a beginner class. Maybe your district provides one or I bet UEN has a lot of <laughs> offerings <laughs> for that. Um, just get in a class and, and poke around and see what the tools are and see how you might use it. Um, there's some pretty nifty ways to use it that become apparent right away. Mm. And so just becoming familiar with it yourself, I think, is the first step. And then I think it's important for teachers to know that, that uh, I'm not claiming to know everything. I'm learning right along with them. And that's going to be the name of the game as we move forward. And we have different tools that are available to us that we're just willing to learn. Uh, along the way and use whatever resources are available to help help students learn, to help school be an engaging learning experience for them. So what are, what are some of the benefits that have come from using Canvas for um, this with faculty? The main one is that even I can use it, mm -hmm. that it, there are some tools that are simple to use and there are some tools uh, that as you learn that, that can do some great things but I hope that that's the first thing that everybody can use it and it's a resource that our district purchases for all students right. and so it needs to be the resource that we use rather than you know if you have two secondary students in our district you have you could potentially have eight ways for each student right. that teachers try to communicate try to provide information and just speaking from personal experience that that can be a little overwhelming. Sure. So if Canvas is the hub, the place we use to, to re at least redirect uh, parents where to get information, it becomes uh, a lot more comfortable for parents to right. be able to support their students. But hopefully, at least for teachers, it's the, yeah, we, we can do this, we can start small, we can learn as we go, we can learn from each other, uh, some of the tools and tricks that are available. So Chris, how has this uh, been received with your staff? It's been received well. I haven't heard many complaints, so that's one measure. You know. <laughs> uh, we, the teachers are really good. They want to be using technology, and so um, at a minimum, they're familiar with where to go to get information, and a lot of them have, have started to use Canvas, and some of them have been using it longer than we have as a faculty and doing a great job. One of the teachers that we have that does a fantastic job with blended instruction using Canvas specifically is our English teacher, Kelsey Flint. And I think it'd be great if we went and talked to her. Okay, let's do it. So I'm here with Kelsey Flint, a teacher at Clearfield High. Why don't you introduce yourself for us? Okay, well I teach English 11 and our International Baccalaureate English 12 class here at Clearfield. And I've been at Clearfield for five years. Oh, fantastic. So we just met with your principal and he, he was telling us how he's using uh, Canvas, especially with the faculty. What are some of the benefits you've seen from that? I think one thing that I like is that when we have resources that we need to share, that it's on this common place where we can all access those instead of having to dig through our email or whatever. Um, I also really like that we're using these not as, I mean, we have different surveys that he's put on there to check our faculty climate, what our attitudes are, and so it's just an easy way to access that. But also, as we've been trying to strengthen our PLCs here, 
We've had different assignments that we've put on Canvas through in different modules over the course of the year. Um, and, all, and I think using these assignments has helped our PLCs focus more on the essential standards of what we want to teach our students. And so having us accountable has made us better teachers. But I think just making sure we're using Canvas in general has helped us use Canvas with our students. So for some of our teachers maybe who are feeling less confident about Canvas, being able to experience it on the student side of things has helped them implement it for their students. Great, I, I mean that's, that's really neat that that's going on. So you feel that um, the way that the principal has used this has been a good model for the other teachers? Yes, absolutely. And you mentioned that you know this has helped out your own teaching. What are some of the things you've done with blended instruction? When it comes to just Canvas in general, I try to put all of our essential content on Canvas so that if someone is missing or things come up in life, mm -hmm. <laughs> as we know that happens, that they can always access that 24-7. Um, when it comes to other forms of blended learning, I've been trying to really personalize our instruction and individualize it. So, I'll, um, for example, in my IB class, I have some students who are testing IB, some who are only testing AP, and some who are testing both. So I've been able to use Canvas and different things like station rotation and um, students teaching each other, doing some flipped classroom to make the course content good for them, for whichever test they are planning on taking. Yeah, that, I think that's great. It's a, it's a great repository to put all your stuff in. And you mentioned a little bit of flipped. Do you, do you put things in Canvas that kids can view at any time? Is that how you use it? Yeah, so I've had, um, I've used some different resources. I'm um, also trying to make videos and put them on there. That one's taking a little bit longer. It's where the students learn at home and do, that's their homework. And then we come to class and we struggle through the assignment together. Now you typically like to use that with things that are um, skill-based that are really hard for them. So then we can experience that together and I can see where they're at and then help them with their weak points. Well, those are some great ideas of how you're using Canvas and blended instruction. I think other teachers will be really happy to hear that and think about ways that they can begin doing that as well and we'll let you get back to class. Great, thanks. Well, thanks for joining us for another episode of UEM PD TV. If you'd like to get more information on how to use Canvas in your class and sign up for one of our free courses, go to uen.org slash development and you can get signed right up and get started so that you can be a master at Canvas just like Chris here. Thanks for letting us be here at Clearfield High with you and we'll catch you on the flip side.